Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Made in Japan. Today, we're checking out Tales of Bessaria, or Bazaria, or Bazaria. It's one of the Tales of Games. Yes, the Tales of Games series has came to us from Bandai Namco for, oh wow, I mean, how many of them is there? This is the 16th, the 16th in the Tales of series. This has passed me by by way, way too much. It's it's a game series that I own copies of. I have Tales of Zesteria, which is in fact an actual, uh, well, it is the original of this. It is the prequel. Well, this is the prequel or very, very far distant prequel of Tales of Zesteria. It's, that's exactly what it is. It's a, I mean, story-wise, it's like so far back in time that it might have some cultural references and symbolism that's actually very similar or whatever else. But it isn't actually like a direct sequel or prequel to it. Perfectly fine. I'm okay with that. That's actually a good way for me to get into this without actually having to worry about not knowing about a game that I actually own but never get around to fully playing because there's so many games to do these videos on. Less complaining, more gaming. Let's get a look inside the Tales of Bessaria. So, we play uh, we lead female character. I'm okay with that. I'm great with that. That's if you guys watch anything and I play, you know that I focus on the female characters and play as them at all time whenever I get the opportunity to. The fact that they have chosen a lead for this, I've, some people might make a stink, maybe make a reference to lightning or something, but they can just shove their control pads up their asses because I don't give a crap. Our two options here are either what appears to be a kind of a cutscene based storyline, and what I do know to be is a never ending loop of gameplay mechanics. Now, we could sit and play gameplay mechanics non-stop, but I think it's actually a mixture of the cutscene and gameplay and what it's going to be actually like to be playing through the campaign of this. It's probably going to be our better of the two choices, so why would I choose anything else? Let's make our decision. And select it in. Alright, let's get started then. Hmm. Right, well, of course, you see, the moon runes say things, but I don't know what those moon runes are. Probably it's saying that this is a game that's currently under development and has not been released yet, so please actually do not consider this the finality of its total. Which is pretty fine. That's pretty much how I believe it should be in most of the cases. Like, they, don't judge a game by its pre release uh, trial demo by any stretch of imagination. So let's see, what else can we find out here? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Well, jumping straight into the game here. Oh. Well, at least I'm actually glad that the audio worked out perfectly fine, because I was a wee bit worried there for a second, because the speech audio for the game actually also plays through your control pad as well, so all those little incidental bits that you usually miss whenever they're walking through the world, eh, you can actually definitely hear them playing back in your control pad anyway at the same time. So let's see. Combat. Right. So the combat is based around these... Ah, uh, okay. The combat is based around these central gems that are on your character, which is a little bit different. I don't think this is actually being used in the... Tales of series previously, it always reminded me a lot more of Eternal Sonata where it was almost like time and movement based where you actually had a, a timer that you had to fill or use a number of or a piece of. But this is a lot more frantic and kinetic, which is interesting. I get on board with this. Oh, right, so whenever you actually run out of things, they, or run out of little gems on your character list, it makes it a lot harder for you to hit correctly. That makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah. I mean, essentially, it's like the impact of your blows is actually like lessened so they can actually block them. Hey, I can get on board with that. Mechanics-wise, this actually isn't too bad. Although I am slightly perturbed by this little prolonged staring match between a girl and a little boy. I'm assuming a little boy, but I mean, it's anime, so it could be anything. Um, he could be a 125-year-old god, and I wouldn't even notice. So, yeah, it appears that the cutscenes... Alright, so the end of the fights, the cutscenes actually kind of like roll into each other, so I'm assuming this is actually a continuation of the conversation that was just being had. Now, of course, it being a, a completely incomprehensible to me. The, the actual style of communication it reminds me a lot more of a visual novel than it does actually a RPG, but I can get on board with this. Um, it's flappy lips and actiony kind of cut ins. They kind of like relate to each other to kind of keep it a little bit fluid, dynamic, and actiony. It also kind of like changes poses a lot more than I would expect a visual novel to do because those tend to actually like be static except for like an arm move or a head tilt. Okay, obviously I'm being chased by something there. Probably one of those gawky birds again. Okay, chests that we have to go and investigate and find. Well, obviously there's going to be health and equipment inside those. Oh, there's another birdie. Turn for the birdie. Right, let's, let's see if I can hit him from behind. 
Now, I didn't get an advantage because he obviously was already kind of like chasing after me, but at least I didn't get attacked from behind myself. Okay, what are they trying to teach me now? Oh, simple enough, how to block. Very useful skill to have. So I like the fact that the battle tutorial kind of just like interrupts you for a second, do that one trick, and then we'll move back on to you kicking some ass. Now the combo system seems to be linked to the face buttons where it's either square, triangle, circle, and X. It's a series of repeated taps that actually chain out a combo. I think you can actually involve them or intersect one combo for another, but I'm assuming it's actually specifically related to some kind of button combination that you have to run off with. And this is a mystic art, that big fisted violence that I can actually pull off. I think I've done, it's, I'm, that hasn't meant to teach me it so far, but I've actually noticed that it was actually attached to the R2 button. I'm assuming these can be assigned keys for different characters or a different um, particular skill, but the main character that I'm playing as, uh, Velvet, Velvet Crow, I think it actually her name is, seems to actually turn one of her arms into a giant beast fist and then punches through her enemies, which is fair play to her. So the world looks fairly spartan. This is actually obviously a small little test area with um, beach enemies and some structures, but I'm not seeing anything that's actually mind-blowing. If you're going to do a demo, pick something that actually visually is really surprising. But the only thing that's surprising is the quality of the water, um, which we've been surprised since, what, Wave Race 64, that people still kind of point that out as a tech, su tech surprise, but I can understand doing good water is kind of difficult. You have to get the right shooters and all that kind of crack into it. So, okay. Ah, little fish head, or little cat head. Oh, it's like Mask Kamen or Tuxedo Mask with that hat on him. It's just such totes of dwarves. So totes of dwarves. Alright, so moving through. He's crying. Somebody's actually obviously gone missing that he wants to find. I'm thinking that this is going to be like a walkthrough section area where I can just ramble on and talk about some of the visual things or little bits and pieces I know and understand about Tales of Zephonia or Cessestria or Basaria. Tales of something or other, you know? It's all the Tales. And it's not Tales, T-A-I-L-S. It's, it's, it's Tales. There's, there's Tales to be told. My um, personal opinion is that uh, th this is a series that could very well take over the mantle as the classic JRPG because Final Fantasies have moved on so much. They have actually, like, they really don't have the same traditional systems, but this one kind of feels a little bit closer to it. This feels like a game that to be honest, was made about, I don't know, what, when was Eternal Sonata brought out? Eternal Sonata came out, maybe, 12, no, not that long ago, must be a bit less than that, probably about 8 years ago, 9 years ago, so, it doesn't look like it's actually, re oh, that's pretty cool, so this is actually a switching mechanic for changing characters in combat, sorry, I'll, I'll finish that thought as soon as I finish this, and this guy obviously seems to hit harder, and has a slower combo strike, Um. And this girl is a mage. This, <laughs> the hat says it all. Alright, so and then you actually do a delayed attack, so you actually charge it up. Wow, that's taking a long time. Oh, right. So you charge it up and release. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not liking the mage character just because it's a bit slow and doesn't seem to actually... It doesn't feel like you're doing as much damage because you're not hitting as hard or as fast. But this guy is uh, definitely punching, his, punching above his weight. Happy days. Or punching under his weight. Strong as hell. Oh, so they do actually have, they don't do cutscenes between every single fight, it's just from relevant fights, because they actually do have a victory pose screen. The only, every time I see a victory pose screen, I just, I want to hear the ba 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 bam 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 ba -dum. It's just like my childhood has ingrained that noise into my head. So moving on through here, well, we've got more cliff sides, more enemies. <sighs> Tales of Basaria, you seem to be interesting. I have previous games in your series on hand that I need to sit down and play. I just don't have the time to drop into an RPG that I don't know I'm going to really enjoy immediately, even though I already own the game to play. It's just the fact that I'll need to work through a series in some way to form to finish it off. Hmm. Right, let's see. There's actually a cat that's actually obviously walking away there. What the hell is going on? Hmm. Oh! Alright, lizard people. <laughs> well, not lizard people, but giant lizards. So let's bring it on. Let's get this fight a going. Okay. Well, of course, the scary little uh, ones are going to run away because their mama's getting attacked. Or the fact that. Oh, well, that's the reason why she's attacking. Okay. Makes absolute sense. 
So what have we got in this battle tutorial to show us now? Oh yeah, it's, it's, now it's finally telling me how to do the big beast attacks that I've been doing so far. So I'm assuming they actually are related into the mountain. Oh right, so this is actually how the combo works. So once you actually use the mystic attack, you can actually continue on and keep on beating on them in a combo. And the last hit of the combo will be a power move. Okay, makes sense. And you, I'm assuming you can chain these together with uh, another combination of other players and all dropping their special attacks at the same time. I can get on board with that. That's kind of cool. So this thing doesn't have a chance to survive, and we're just going to pull more of the life out of it and move on. But it doesn't seem to be that much more of a content to this. I mean, I knew that this was going, this was going to take us to a boss, but is this the boss that they were going to kind of like intimate was the end of the fight? Well, I'm sure this is actually like about a third of the way through the game, so there's actually some kind of serious relevancy to how wet, overpowered your characters are. Just kind of like, there's times you've given you an opportunity to play around with all the mechanics and you'll work your way up to this kind of violence again in the game. The Tales of Basaria has got a bit of time before we're going to see it over here for translation. I mean, I think it's only getting released in Japan later on. It's at the end of this month or at the beginning of September. So, yeah, there's going to be a fairly long wait before we actually see Basaria arrive onto our shores. I mean, it was, in the end, one thing we have to accept, it's a PS3 game that's been upgraded to PS4, so it's just like a little bit of higher visual vitality. And that's not even the first game in the series that's done that. Tales of Zestria is available and can be tried out. If you really want to try a game in the Tales of series and haven't tried one before, just try the sister title to this one, the one that's kind of like the, a much, much futurized, or not futurized, but kind of like a much more different timeline but same play as world and tales of this history i've got nothing else to say about the tales of series it's so uh it, it's a long running rpg series you've seen what the gameplay is like uh, guys you need to check it out check it out for yourself uh, if you have any questions or have comments or thoughts that uh, actually that i've missed out a major major thing about tales of series that you need to check out or you need to tell me about feel free to put it into a comment underneath the video Otherwise, hit the like button if you like the video, hit dislike if you could not stand my absolute lack of knowledge about the Tales of series, and uh, remember to give me a shout and come back anytime to do another video, because I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye